Okay, we're back. This is the second video for making the game Pig with Dice. And we have already built our die class, which we can roll. And we have built a player class to keep track of the turn and the total score, so that as we play the game, we'll be able to record those numbers in a nice place. So the next thing to do is to make the game class, the model that holds the die and the players and sort of puts everything together for us in one model class. So our game class right now, a little empty. <laughs> Let's give it some data fields. We are definitely going to need a die, a player, two players, and going to be helpful for us to be able to keep track of the current player. Okay, so when somebody says, I would like to make a game of pig, we would like to know the names of the players. Name and string player to name. Okay, with that, we should be able to say, let's make a new die with six sides. And let's put a one on top. And then we also want to say, let's make a new player with player one's name. And P2 equals a new player with P2's name. Okay. And the current is equal to player one. So that should take care of what we need to get things going. Now, it was kind of awkward to have to pick the top here. It would be nice for it to be sort of a default. Let's go back to our die and say, we can make more than one constructor. Public die. If somebody doesn't give us anything, let's just make the default die. Sides equals six and top equals one. That makes it easier for us to say, I could make it variable, or I could just make a die. And it gives me the default six-sided die. Great. Okay, next thing we want. We want access to everything. So here's our accessor methods. Don't forget this one is the constructor that we're making. And let's see if it helps us out. Oh, let's give somebody the die. Let's get the current player. Let's get P1 in particular. And let's get P2. Okay, this is going to let somebody else look at the different pieces, store things inside the player's numbers if we want to, but really the game should be taking care of all that. There's other things we might want the GUI to know about. These are going to be some status methods for us. And we're going to say public boolean is the game over. Well, how do we know if the game is over? We know if the current player's score is greater than 100. So return current get total score is greater than or equal to 100. Well, 100 is kind of a magic number here. I'm going to replace it with a variable and put that back up here at the top. I'm going to say if we define our max score, then anybody else can look at the max score and know about it because we made it public. We made it final so that nobody can change it on the outside. We made it static so it belongs to the game and not a game that is constructed. And so this is how we're going to define variables that are magic numbers. We're going to make a constant out here. Okay, that makes our game over make sense. And then we're going to say public, hey, well, 
it would be nice to know whose turn it is. And what we're going to do is talk about, hey, is it player one's turn? And if it's not, we're going to know it's player two's turn. So we're going to know is current equal to player one. <clears throat> now note here, I'm not doing dot equals. I could, but equals equals is actually going to work here because current and player one, I am comparing the references. Is current pointing to the exact same object as player one? If not, it's going to be pointing at player two. And I wouldn't want them to be true if they just happened to have exactly the right exact turn score, exact name, exact total. I want them to be completely different players, even though they might have the same exact values. So that's what equals equals is going to do for us with these objects. <clears throat> okay, the gameplay methods that we need. We are going to have to switch turns. If it is player one's turn, then I want it to be player two's turn. If it's player two's turn, I want it to be player one's turn. So if, well, let's just use the method that we just wrote, p1 turn current equals p2. Otherwise, current equals p1. So that should get it for us. We can call switch turn and then the turn is going to change. The important things that we're seeing here in our GUI are these two buttons, roll and hold. So let's make methods for them. Public void roll. What should be happening in the game when somebody says roll the die? Well, most importantly, we're gonna roll the die. It would be nice to figure out the top, get the top, that's more convenient, okay, and then, hey, current player, update your turn score by this number. Well, if it happened that you rolled a 1, oh, let's keep going here, wow, it's so big, 24. Oh, if I rolled a zero, then. Okay, so if t is one, then everything gets wiped out. Hey, current, reset your turn score. And it's no longer your turn. Switch the turn. Okay, that's the effect of rolling. You can roll and keep on rolling and accumulate those points in your turn score. But if you ever roll a one, then you have to reset the score and switch the turn. The other button we have is hold. And let's figure out what happens in the game when somebody holds. Current, you get to save your score. Whatever score you have in the turn, add that to your total. We switch the turn. And uh, this is going to be useful for later, but I want to set the top to be nothing. I'm going to set the top to be zero. So notice back here in the die, I said I wasn't really allowed to do that. When I said set the top, if top is greater than zero, then you're fine. Well, I want a way to display the state of the game and the die. If it's a brand new game, I don't want the die sitting with a number at the top. So I'm going to make a, a top zero. This is what it's going to be when the die has not really been rolled or not ready yet. So technically, I want this top, when the die is created, to be top equals zero for right now. Great. Okay, so that should be our game. Let's see if we can test it. Static void main string bracket bracket args. Okay, so we need to make a game. Game G equals new game, and let's give it some player names. Mark and my son Brian, we are going to play this game back and forth. Okay, and 
we know that there's a die. We have two players. It is currently Mark's turn. Let's roll the die, or yeah, so G dot roll. And then print some stuff out. And talk to player one. So on the outside, let's just do it like we would. We'd say get P1 dot get turn score. Uh, whoa, what was that? I don't want that. P1 turn equals that. Now, what I want to do is to know player two, their total and their turn. So for these, I'm going to say total and total. So we're going to roll the die and player one should get something in their turn score if they didn't roll the one. Uh, let's try this out. Okay, looks like I rolled a one. We should have seen that. Well, it looks like nothing happened here, but let's system.out.print line. Let's just double check that. I rolled plus g dot get die dot get top. Okay, that'll be even better for us to do some testing here. Okay, the die rolled a five. We can see that down here. <clears throat> and it was player one's turn, so they got a five. Player two turn score is also a five. Why is that? That shouldn't be it, right? <gasps> Copy and paste. Copy and paste is evil. So I forgot to change this into a two for all of those places. Good. Turn total, turn total. P1, P2. I changed the words, but I didn't change my code over here. Great. So there wasn't a bug in our programming. There was a bug in my testing. So four gets put over there. Great. Well, let's just test it a few times. Four and i equals zero. I less than ten. I plus plus. We are going to play the game and just keep rolling. So four, roll the one, the other player's turn. Then I roll the one, other player's turn, five, ten. 15, oh, other player's turn, the three. Player two is accumulating that three. Another three, they get a six. On a six, they get a 12. Okay, it is swapping turns back and forth. We have tested out the roll. Let's do a little bit more. And then g dot hold. This is just random testing, but I want to see, does anybody have any points at the end of the game? They should because of the holding. Yes, player one has 35 points, player two has 27 points. It might have swapped back and forth in the middle there a few times, but we are accumulating some points being put together because we roll, roll, and hold. People are saving some points. Great. Okay, we have our three classes for the model. The die, the game, and the player, and they're coming together to let us play a game of pig. Next things we want to do is to sketch out in Scene Builder what the GUI looks like. That'll be the next video. And then the final video will be wiring things up with the controller to get it all to work. <clears throat> okay, I'll be back in a bit.